So this is a pretty new stump jumper. It was introduced uh, like 10 months ago or something like that. And it has been revised in so many ways from that old stump jumper. This is now a short travel bike with uh, some tweak geometry. It's 140 in the front and 130 in the rear, which is actually 10 millimeters or so shorter than the old stump jumper. All new stump jumpers come in 29 inch wheels and they also come in carbon versions and in aluminium versions. But the stump jumper Evo only comes in carbon versions. What has been revised from the old model is a lot actually, uh, specifically the frame. The whole frame has been built differently and the frame is now longer, lower and slacker. Maybe you've heard that expression before. Different types of carbon material has been used. So the top tube for instance uh, has a different kind of material than the down tube and Specialized have removed material where it's not needed and added material where it is needed. And if you study this frame close up, you can see it's a fantastic, beautiful frame. So Specialized is doing a big number about this new seat stay. This is actually one piece altogether, one piece of carbon. And gone is that horse link design with the FSR pivot right here. It still exists on the alloy version, uh, but here on all the carbon versions uh, it's gone. And it has been replaced with this seat stay which has some flex to it. On the Stump Jumper Evo version you could actually change this part. They call it a mullet link. And by switching that part you could add a 27.5 inch wheel to that Evo version. I don't think you can do that on the regular normal stump jumper. But at least you can transform your Evo to a mullet stump jumper. One thing that I like a lot is that it's a very quiet bike. There is a chain stay protector here, like on all other bikes I guess. But there's a seat stay protector here as well. And there's also some protection here. And all these cables, they run in cable sleeves inside the frame. So it's very quiet this bike. And that adds to that feeling that everything is well screwed together on this bike. I also like this part. Uh, that's a SWAT box, I think they're called. Inside there, it's a banana compartment. But what Specialized has done is to put something else in here. And inside here is an inner tube. And beneath this bottle cage is also a multi-tool. That's a nice touch. SLX here, SLX there, SLX, four pot SLX, SLX, and even that thing is SLX. And so geometry wise, this is more like an enduro bike. If you forget about the suspension travel, it's got a 65 degree head angle and it's got a rather steep seat post. The chain stays are very short. They're 432 millimeters here in size large. They're 10 millimeters longer on uh, bigger sizes, but 432 from large and downwards in the range. Yeah, this is a uh, trail rated red. I'm not supposed to go here really, according to Chris at Sportson, but this is in the interest of science. A big sorry to Sportson in Gothenburg for taking your spanking new test bike out on a red trail. This Sportson store is a must to visit if you're into any type of mountain biking. Everyone working here is mad about mountain bikes. I think that the tires that are on the Evo version of the Stump Jumper is a better choice for these type of trails. But yeah, we're doing it. Phew. Yeah. I feel that geometry wise, the head angle is absolutely okay. It's 65 degrees and that is enduro territory. So that's not an issue. I can actually keep some pace here. And just the jumping, which this bike loves. Okay, some steep rough part. Yeah. Line choice isn't really my strong side. But yeah, doesn't really matter what side. There's no over the bar feeling at all. Despite, despite this pretty gnarly descent. I really like how lively this bike is. It changes direction easily. You can pop over jumps and choose whatever line you want to. Yeah, the only issue is the tires. I can feel the rear tire slipping away there. But that's all right. A few reviewers had said that it is some pedal bob on this bike, but I don't feel it really. Yep. All 
right, so I've been through a few uh, red trails, a few faster, flowy blue trails with this bike. And I was surprised actually, I didn't think it would handle the red trails that well, but it did. And here on asphalt, it's uh, very, very fast too, possibly because of the tires, of course. So I feel this bike is more versatile than the Specialized Enduro, which I liked very much actually here in the bike parks. But this is, I shouldn't say almost as good, but uh, it's actually doable to ride on uh, trails rated red here. Then there's a specialized Dump Jumper Evo. And that is uh, a completely different bike, I think, compared to this bike. I haven't tested that bike, but it seems as if it sits closer to an enduro bike than a trail bike. It's both got a longer travel and it also has a stronger frame too and uh, a completely different geometry to it as well. So it almost feels as if the Stump Jumper Evo is an entirely different bike, just my opinion. I feel this is a very playful bike in mellow terrain. Everyone that tested this bike today felt the same thing. They really liked the bike. There's nothing to complain about. The bike does feel a bit stiff in the rear end. But on the other hand, I'm thinking that is what contributes to that playful and poppy character that this bike has. Here are three annoying things with the specialized dump dumper. The spec to price ratio is a bit low. I would like to have seen a step up in the suspension components for this price, or at least a nicer damper in the fork. Not specialized specific, but it seems as if all new MTBs get easily scratched from even the smallest touch. Personally, I want a longer dropper if it could fit. With the dropper up, I sit too low. With the dropper down, I don't have enough clearance for my liking. Here are three good things with the Specialized Dump Jumper. I shouldn't be surprised at this point. It seems as if all Specialized mountain bikes are super lively and playful. The frame seems to be next level when it comes to tech, geometry and refinement. Every detail is beautiful to look at and the tuned shock displays attention to details. Of course XT components are better and lighter, but I appreciate the SLX component. They work very well and in the long run you will save a considerable amount of money on spare parts. So I'm thinking this bike is aimed at trail riding, but I was actually pleasantly surprised when I was trying this on some trails rated red. And uh, I didn't think that I would tackle them so well that I did. Despite the short travel, I think it's a geometry that helps. So I've seen many other reviewers saying that on uh, burlier trails it doesn't work that well. But for me it worked better than expected. But the thing I like the most with this bike is the fantastic playful characters that this bike has. You can't go over a crest without jumping. It's difficult not to jump on this bike and that's to my liking. The negative parts then. Well, I don't think you buy a specialized bike for the components. The SLX drivetrain, the SLX brakes are perfectly fine. I'm pretty happy with those. But the fork and the rear suspension uh, is a bit under par, I think. That's a standard Fox 34 there. It works well on trails. But as soon as there's a high speed chatter, you know, brake bumps, stuff like that, and uh, roots and rocks, um, it starts to fail. It starts to overwhelm the bike. The bike feels a bit stiff in the rear, but that's okay because it doesn't bottom out and it keeps the rear end uh, poppy and springy. That's what I like. All in all, it's an absolutely fantastic bike. Costs some money, but overall you pay for the frame and that uh, research and development that has gone into that frame. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.